After spending the summer of 2022 competing across Canada, the NASCAR Pinty Series wraps up today at Delaware Speedway. After 250 laps of competition, we'll have one new winner and confirm a brand new champion. The NASCAR Pinty Series is the most diverse and one of the toughest championships to win. You have to be great on ovals, confident and fast on road courses, and now skilled on dirt. Tell me any other division that is as diverse as the Pinty Series. You have to admit, this has been one of the most competitive seasons to date, and the 96 of Cameron has been the one to beat each and every race. Hands down, this is one of the hardest NASCAR championships. Hello and welcome to Delaware Speedway as we get set to bring you the 13th and final round of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series season on TSN. We're just outside of London, Ontario as we prepare to bring you the Pinty's Fall Brawl 250 laps here at Delaware Speedway. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross, Todd Lewis, and Clinton Jeffrey, both patrolling the pits for us here today. But Adam, what a season it has been. 13 races across five provinces. We've had road courses, street cur courses, ovals, and an introduction to dirt. We've seen it all in 2022. And in 15 years of running this NASCAR Pinty Series Championship, we have never seen a more competitive year. More teams, more competitive teams. It has been a blast to watch, and it all comes down to this, Delaware Speedway, where really this National Stock Car Series got its start, and they've done some adjustments to the racetrack, a little bit of asphalt added in strategic places, Dave. And this has become a two-groove track. It is a racy joint, and we have a lot of cars out there today. And this is championship weekend here at Delaware Speedway. Of course, the track crowned a champion in their late model division. Ray Morneau Jr. picking up the championship there. A familiar face to NASCAR fans, J.R. Fitzpatrick won a championship in APC late model competition. And today, the championship is all but decided of the number 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. All he has to do is realistically start the engine and he will win his first ever championship. Cameron is a deserving champion. He's had a phenomenal year. But how about that battle for second? Kevin Lacroix, DJ Kennington, Alex Tagliani, all season long, that battle has been tight. And like you mentioned, Dave, we've been on different surfaces, different road courses, street courses, you name it. They've stayed glued together, and it all comes down to this, the last day of the season. Consistently, though, the name that we've talked about at the top of the point standings all year long is Mark Antoine Cameron, the 43-year-old from St. Leonard Bastogne, Quebec, just in his fifth full-time season competing in NASCAR. But this year, three wins, 10 top 10s already, just been a dominant force. And Dave, it's more than just the driver. J.C. Payet assembled an amazing team. It's going to be Payet's very first NASCAR Pinty Series championship, but for crew chief Robin McCluskey, it's his third title. They put together a tight-knit group. Everybody knows their role, and they're building big things down there in Berthierville, Quebec. And with more on the champion in waiting, let's send it down and say hello to Todd. Thanks, Todd. And of course, the other championship we're watching today is the battle for Justin's Rookie of the Year. J.P. Bergeron and Brandon Watson came from various different backgrounds, but they have fought very hard all season long. And it looks to be the number nine driver from Stainer, Ontario, who is edging out on top right now. Both of our lead rookies this year really did a phenomenal job. But it's been Brandon Watson's ability to close big races, get those results, mm. and in my opinion, Dave, come home on road courses with some phenomenal finishes, which was a surprise because Brandon Watson is an oval track specialist. Now, let's more on today's potential Rookie of the Year crown winner. Let's send it down to Clinton Jeffrey. Clinton? 
Thanks, guys. Well, 29-year-old Brandon Watson is no rookie to racing. He's won just about everything he can behind the wheel of a late model. Today, he picked up another pole position, and that makes three on the year with eight top tens. The white motorsports driver knows how to get it done. Brandon, you got a great starting spot today, but you know how tough it can be at Delaware. What's your game plan today? Well, I'll definitely try and stay up at the front here. Like I said, these white motorsports guys, they gave us a great piece today. Uh, we're, we're extremely happy with the qualifying run we got in. Uh, we went good in practice, so I think we got a good car for the race. Just like I said, try and stay up front, uh, stay out of any uh, any trouble that uh, come our way. But uh, stay up there, see, see we're going halfway, see if we make any adjustments. Uh, I know our guys back at the pits will make the right calls, and we'll, we'll be back out there, hopefully uh, up at the front, and we can end up in the victory lane here, get our first win in the NASCAR Pinty Series, and uh, end off on a good note. Right on. Watch for Brandon, guys. He knows how difficult it is to get through here. It's going to be a long day rolling from the pole, but this team is resilient. They won't quit today. You can bet on that. Thanks, Clint. It's been a phenomenal weekend here. Three days of racing plus one day of concert on Thursday night. All comes down to this race. It's going to be a barn burner. And when we return, we'll drop the gloves for the Pinty's Fall Brawl here on TSA. The final race of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty's season on TSN is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. And by Fast Eddie Speedwear, get geared up. Dave, the cars are on the racetrack. They've got to get some heat into these tires, but boy, oh boy, the engines love the cool air. And earlier on, these four got things started for us. Drivers, start your engines! That's the way to fire it up here at the Pinty's Fall Brawl. Now, the cars have been on track for several laps already. Pace lap speed only. They're trying to build some heat in this track because of a little bit of moisture that fell leading up to this. But let's take a look here. Quick, quick starting grid. Of course, Brandon Watson on pole. Raphael Lassard will start alongside. Row 2 has Donald Teej in the 80, and then Trayton Lapsovich in the 20. Starting fifth is DJ Kennington in the 17. Kyle Steckley in the 22 is sixth. In row 4, we've got Andrew Ranger in the 27, and Mark Antoine Cameron in the 96. Looking back to row number 5, that's where we find Alex Tagliani in the 18. Ray Morneau making his first start in the Pinty Series in the 03. Jake Sheridan back behind the wheel of the 3 car, and Kevin Lacroix in the 74. Alex LeBay returns to join us here today in the 36. Dexter Stacy drives the 92. Mark Dilley will start 15th, and Matthew Kingsbury starts 16th in the 12. Gary Clute in the 59. He'll start in row number nine alongside.
focus for the first couple of corners. Kyle Steckley in the 22 still hanging it up on the outside as Donald Teach goes to work on the 20. A great lapse of it for third. DJ Kennington right up under the back bumper of Donald Teach. Nobody is willing to give an inch right now. This is when you want to make your passes, Dave, when the field is bunched up, you're too wide. Once they get strung out under green, it's tough to make a pass. And look there from our aerial shot. The top two have been single file and Look at the gap they've been able to open up to third place. That's how quickly it can happen. and then Cameron got punted by Lacroix. I think Cameron saw what was going on with Ranger and lifted. Kevin Lacroix not able to see through the Cameron car. That's Dennis Thompson as the 22. He's the spotter for Kyle Stackley as the 22 gets swallowed up by the 17 of DJ Kennington. Dennis Thompson is spotted for a lot of great race car drivers, not the least of which is brother Don Thompson Jr. Yeah, it's not his first trip to the rodeo, that's for sure. Look at that, though. The 74, remember, he made contact with the 96 not too long ago. Now he's already opened up a gap. Problems for the 03 of Ray Morno. He's way up to the outside. He is off the pace trying to get out of the way, but that is a big, angry pack of race cars closing in. Oh, what a bummer for Ray Morno. He was fast in practice. There you can see Wallace Stacy in the police truck stop, number 66, going through Daniel Block. Now Morno will duck to the inside. He's looking for pit lane. Oh, that's heartbreak for that team. Driver from Windsor, Ontario, with a lot of fans here at Delaware Speedway. Clinton Jeffrey is on the scene. Well, guys, heavy smoke out of the 03 for Ray Morno Jr. here. They immediately go under the hood. Looks like it could be a big problem here for this car. That's got to be a heartbreak for that team. You can see a bunch of crew members looking under the hood. They have to try and diagnose the problem and fix it all while still under green. Yeah, just trying to quickly look. There's Rick McCall is the crew chief on that car, but you've got Randy Morneau, Colton Everingham, a lot of people down there that know what they're looking at. Yeah, the old three cars from the Steckley Stable. It was a car Trayton Lapsovich drove last year. Also the car Stuart Friesen drove at Oshwiken to a runner-up finish. Kevin Lacroix putting the pressure on Donald Teach. We ride on board with the 74. Man, he is really able to stick to the bottom. See the Napa Auto Parts number 74 move to the inside. Teach will give him the lane in one and two. That's a smart move by the veteran Teach at this stage in the race. We're only 11 laps in. There's still a long way to go. I want to talk about that view as the race goes on. Because when you look, you think, well, why don't they just turn left? There's all that room down there. If you go over that line and you see it, see where their left side tires are. If you move to the inside of that line, there's no banking at all. It just spits the car right up the racetrack. And it's hard to tell from riding on board. In three and four, there's a rumble strip to the inside of the turn as well. Exactly. So you feel it before you even see it. But that's why, if you're wondering, you don't go any lower than what they're, they're going couple racers out of the 22 racing shop as we look back to another entrant from the Scott Steckley stable the 18 of Alex Tagliani under some pressure there from Jake Sheridan of course Jake Sheridan had a great run on the dirt at Oshwick and he's making his first NASCAR Pinty start on asphalt I love Jake Sheridan's driving style for the NASCAR Pinty series his father, Ron Sheridan, had a lot of success here at Delaware, but Jake is an elbows-up driver. I would love to see him get more opportunities. Interesting story about that car, too. That was the car that Raphael Lassard drove on the dirt at Oshweekin. Not only that, it was the car that Jason Hathaway drove to his championship here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. No kidding. Watching this battle, Kyle Steckley has gotten around Trayton Lapsovich. Kevin Lacroix is close. Trouble. Wallace Stacy is around in turn number two. Lucky he didn't get stuck on that grass, but caution does come out for the first time. 
for the K Fiber Optic number 66 of Wallace Stacy, a spin on the inside of turn number two. Let's have another look at this from high above the racetrack. Abby Solomon, our drone pilot today. It'll be right down the bottom of the screen. And yeah, I don't know if he got down on the flat or just got too hard into the throttle, but Wallace Stacy goes around. TJ Rinomato is going to move up. He'll be the free pass car during this first caution as the number nine of Brandon Watson leads. Welcome back to race number 13 in the final round of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty's Series season here on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross in the booth. Both Clinton Jeffrey and Todd Lewis are trackside for us here today as we get set for our first restart of the afternoon. Mike Charay throws the green flag and Brandon Watson once again getting a great launch. Pulls down in front of Rafael Lazard in that number eight. Flying past the speed shot down the back straightaway. You can see Steckley still struggling to get down in that 22. He can't find the opening he needs as the 17 of DJ Kennington plugs a hole on the inside. I chatted with DJ Kennington earlier today, Dave, and it's not something I often do at the racetrack. He is laser focused on what's going on. He has a ton of confidence today. In fact, even to the point where he said, you know, he said, I've been running pretty well this year. You know, we, we have a lot of talk about drivers like Cam Rand, who has led a ton of laps, Kevin Lacroix, who's always exciting. Pull up, pull up, go, corner, still at your bumper, clear. But I think DJ Kennington deserves a lot of mentions. His style is such that he is always right there, just not always in a way that we would talk about a lot, but he means business today. Kennington in nine races here at Delaware Speedway. Two back to the two. He has five wins, seven podiums, never finished out of the top five. As a matter of fact, he's led 484 of nearly 1,700 laps completed. And with this lap completed, DJ Kennington has now finished 30,000 laps in NASCAR Pinty Series competition. I'll bet you what is even more amazing is there haven't been many more than 30,000 laps of competition held in the NASCAR Pinty Series. He completes most of the laps most of the time. It's not very often you see that Castro Edge Dodge leave the track on the hook with a mechanical problem or in a crash. DJ Kennington, one of the cleanest drivers out on the racetrack, but a lot of these drivers having to use the bumper deeper in the field. You see Sheridan just ahead of Andrew Ranger in the 27. Donald Teach in there, Matthew Kingsbury. This is a battle royale deep in the field. Andrew Ranger and Sheridan side by side down through one and two. Donald Teach to the inside of Matthew. Listen how, oh, yellow flag, couple of cars together, three of them, in fact. Trevor Monaghan in the 28, Glenn Styers in the zero, Sam Fellows in the 98. Turn three is the problem area for this one. You can see the steam coming out of the 98 AER Chevy Camaro and fire on the zero of Glenn Styers. I was just seeing smoke coming from the right front corner. I don't know what would be on fire there unless he burst a brake line maybe and that's brake fluid burning off. It does look like it's inside the wheel. But it's still burning. He's moving, so he's going to try and put this fire out with motion. 
Turn the brake fans on. That'll blow it out. It's Glenn Stires gets moving once again. We'll have another look at what caused this caution in the first place. Down into the corner. Oh, there's Sam Fellow spinning to the inside right there. And again, Larry Jackson can't see that because he's right behind LP Dumlin. But as we look up into the screen, we see Fellows go around. Stires lock him up and go around. Glenn? Well, Glenn Stires will pull the zero car in. They've got some right side damage that the crew will have to attend to. Body rub making the car smoke heavily should be a quick fix for these guys. No, that, that car did not look right when it came down pit road, Dave. It was dog tracking a little bit. The number 98 AER Chevy Camaro rolls to a stop in pit lane. Hood goes up immediately. Crew goes to work, but not much intensity there. It's been a tough year for Sam Fellows. They've had speed at a lot of... ticked off right now but I don't know I gotta thank my sponsors thanks everyone for making this happen this year thanks for your time Sam a disappointed shrug of the shoulders from Sam Fellows uh, not the way he wanted to end his year here in 2022 I don't know and, and having a hard time hiding the frustration as we said is a real character building year a top year for Fellows Listen to how long they're off the throttle. We'll have to do it next time we go to an onboard. This racetrack is something else on the driver. It requires a lot of patience to go fast around Delaware Speedway. It's a half mile, but it's very much like a paper clip. You've got long straightaways and then fairly tight, flat corners. Track to really get a hold of. Outside, outside, pull them, pull them. Still out there, still out there. You're clear. That's what DJ. Last year, he's recovering from knee surgery, not from any sort of altercation on pit lane. Just needed a little tune up, and we hope Gary Mead will be back at the track soon. Yeah, that's for sure. While we're talking yeah. about that, condolences go out to the Graham family on the recent passing of Gary Graham. He was a fixture at the racetrack. Of course, Brad Graham's father. Uh, and I mean, I grew up with Brad racing go-karts, so I've known Gary since I was a kid. Yeah, and Brad is back at the track helping out the 98 team. Unfortunately, as we mentioned, their day ends just a little bit early. Here's a driver we haven't talked much about, Alex Tagliani. In that number 18 machine, he's embroiled in that battle for second place in the points. But Kevin Lacroix and DJ Kennison both quite a bit farther forward than the driver of the number 18. Tagliani, though, had a great qualifying effort inside the top five, so you know he's got a very good race car. May just be preaching patience to himself. Don't get tangled in anything too early, as he did a year ago, and that took him out of the event very, very early in the running there. Last year here at Delaware Speedway was basically a disaster for Alex Tagliani. So I was actually surprised to see him qualify in the top five. That had to give him a lot of hope going into today's race. And he is moving in the right direction. The NTN Viagra Quick Wick Chevrolet is just ahead of the three of Jake Sheridan. 
leading a, actually right in the middle of that train, right behind your points leader, the GM Pie number 96, a Mark Antoine camera. And not often you see that car not at the front of the field, the very front of the field. He's led half of the last run all year long. One and two. One and oh, two. yellow is out. Another problem up there in turn number two. We got one car around. That's Glenn Styers in the GSR number zero. So you might be right. That car maybe not working to the like. Mid lane is closed. The field going to line up behind the pace car as they do. We'll take a quick break. You're watching the NASCAR Pinty series on TSN. Welcome back to the Pinty's Fall Brawl here at Delaware Speedway. The field tucked up nicely behind the pace car that dives for pit lane. This time, Brandon Watson's going to start on the inside, changing things up here on lap 76. He's got series veteran and Delaware Speedway veteran DJ Kennington on the outside of him. That could be the difference where Brandon wanted to go to the bottom. Or it could be we're so early in the race, he just wanted to feel what his car would do down there. And with DJ Kennington, I mean, Raphael Lazard gave him a run for his money on the inside. And look at that. DJ Kennington led a lap here in the Castro Ledge Dodd, crossing the line first. They has done something nobody else has been able to do through the first portion of this race. And that's a bonus point for DJ Kennington. Right on board the... Tricorp sponsored number nine to Brandon Watson. Look at the focus on his eyes. And look at him every so often glancing out to the right from inside the race car. Kevin LaCroix has taken up that third spot in the seventh. the wick now the number nine is all over the back of the driver from st thomas ontario to the inside goes watson wow right down to the bottom he goes we had seen dj driving into the turns his car floating up the racetrack just a little bit and watson's able to the inside line rookie strike still on the back of that number nine but he is driving like anything but a rookie as he noses his way back into top spot here on the front straightaway DJ Kennington's not giving up, but this might come back to bite DJ as Kevin Lacroix is closing in. There you said it. He found that hole and he decided to get back in there. Live to fight another day. Try and get back to the inside. Wow, and Kevin Lacroix right up to the... DJ Cannington, he'll be around at the end of this race. He always is. And he's already thinking 40 laps from now when they have that midway break, exactly what he wants to do to that 17 machine, just to pick it up that little bit more. Quick run on board the Prolon number 36 of Alex LeBay as he works over another Alex in Tagliani just ahead in the 18, but LeBay looking inside, outside, trying to find a way around. There's another look at the three of Jake Sheridan. He's found his own little pocket out there, running well inside the top ten, and we are under yellow once again for a problem in turn number two. You can see the field woeing up very quickly. We'll have another look from our aerial shot. Way up at the top, Wallace Stacy once again going around. Up and out of the groove there is the bullies truck stop number 66 but a great crowd here at delaware speedway again dancing between the raindrops at times but they're hardy fans you know what mother nature got involved today but it has been a phenomenal four days of fun here at delaware speedway from the concert thursday night 
but they've crowned more champions. I think five different championships have already been decided this weekend. And now for number six, we're here today. And we're being treated to a great race on track as well. And once again, the nine of Brandon Watson jumps to the outside for this restart here on lap number 90. Outside, still out there. We can't stress enough what a big difference it makes the number of cars in this race. I can't remember 27 cars showing up for an oval track race in this series. Not only that, the competition level, because 24 of those cars still on the lead lap after 91 circuits here at Delaware. That's almost unheard of. A lot of speed. I mean, everybody shows up with quality pieces ready to compete. Brandon Watson rolling around the outside of DJ Kennington, but he's not yet been able to clear the number 17. Now he'll be able to get down into turn one back into the racing line. You don't really want to call him a dark horse because he's already won a couple times in the NASCAR Pinty Series, but that driver of the eight easy clean Chevy Camaro, Rafael Lasardi, is having a whale of a run here today. Had to listen to that, Dave. <laughs> he is, and I think it's fair to say the results this year have been disappointing for that eight machine. I think he expected more, he's capable of more, and boy, what it wouldn't give to them to show up today and have a great run and maybe battle for a win. Lassard running on the ovals in the eight car, Ray Jr. Cordemange doing the road course duties and street circuits as well as a side-by-side -side battle now between the 74 and the 20. Yellow, and caution out yet. Alex LeBay in turn number two in that 36 machine has gone around, Dave. Yeah, he was battling hard with the 18 of Alex Tagliani just up until that point. He was up on the outside. Tagliani was down low. Have another look from on board the 36. Okay, it looks like Tagliani might have got loose and he may have had some help because you saw the front of the car wiggle after LeBay had already started to spin. That tells me the back end of the Tagliani machine caught the back end of the LeBay machine, sent him around. They got a push where he didn't need a push. We'll take a quick break. Brandon Watson continues to lead. The field lined up once again, and welcome back to NASCAR Racing here on TSN and the Penty's Fall Brawl from Delaware Speedway. Once again, it's Brandon Watson up on the outside. Your race leader, DJ Kennington, is going to try and give him a go into turn number one as we go back to green. Car's getting squirrely deeper in the field. You saw Alex Tagliani. That car wiggled right out of the inside lane. He got back in line before they got to the green. But Brandon Watson, man, he is having phenomenal restarts today. Kennington not able to get up there as he was able to during that last restart. Look at the wiggle from the eight of Rafael Lassard on quarter X. And now we should mention, you talked about it, the repaved job here at Delaware Speedway. A lot of the bumps on quarter exit are gone now. So that makes that outside groove much more raceable. There's still a lot of character spots around the racetrack, and there are still spots where local racers have an advantage. Just from sheer repetition, Dave. Clear, clear all around, on your bump. Bumper. Luke Ramsey and Russ Erland doing a wonderful job at prepping this track for this championship weekend and for the NASCAR Pinty Series in their season-ending fall brawl here today. Tip of the hat to everybody, all the staff here, just greeted us with a big smile and face. Oh, problem for Gary Clute on the racetrack. He is off the pace and headed to pit road. That car had a weird wiggle on it. The new Techwood number 59 down pit lane. We remain under green. Don, what's up? It was a shrug of the shoulders from the crew chief, John Fletcher, when I asked what was the problem with the 59, but they are going under the hood. They had motor problems previously. They're looking under the hood now. Of course, the obvious check, spark plug wires and easy things, but the 59 remains along the pit road. Look at the bouncing on the front bumper, so this may be a problem with the suspension. Okay, there you have it. Yeah. I was waiting to hear what he was trying to say. Spindle broke. Yeah, so that's it. Looks like they will be done for the 59 of Gary Clute. That is not a quick repair, unfortunately. And the second half of the season is just kind of gone that way for Clute. Oh, man. If he didn't have bad luck, he would have no luck at all. 
in the second portion, really from the western swing onward in that 59 car. He was having such a solid year up until that point. You know, it's how the season goes. That western swing is such a pivotal moment in the season. Keep in mind, it's been three years since we've done the western swing. Not to make any excuses, it's just we're back to that grind where the yeah. season is really challenging to get through. And for some reason, like any other sport, you go into streaks, hot streaks, cold streaks. Hasn't been a good one for Clute. No, very much a cold streak. And Gary Clute out, out of his car and standing by with our Todd Lewis. Todd? Gary, this is a frustrating way to end the season, isn't it? Yeah, you know, the car was really good. We had a terrible qualifying run, but we were making our way to the front. Um, New Tech Wood, Bothwell Acker, I can't thank those guys enough for the season. Yeah, I just hate it for my guys. I mean, every time we come out, we're, you know, a threat for a top five, if not a threat to win on a lot of the races, but just tough to compete in a championship with uh, four or five mechanical failures. It's frustrating. Gary Clute with a new baby on the way, too, so he'll have to focus on his home life for the first half of the offseason. We got caution on the track, though. This should be the midway break of the race, and Gary Clute is going to learn all about perspective <laughs> when that new baby arrives. Very much so. So, as we mentioned off the top of the show, it is a break race. So, five minutes, and the crews will have the opportunity to make any changes they need to this race car. We look up into the sky, there's still clouds up there. So the main thing, Dave, this race is official. No matter what happens from here, if Mother Nature rains on our parade, they've run enough laps to make this race official. We want to get the whole show in, but that's probably going through the minds of some of these crew chiefs. Field lined up in their pit stalls. Let's send it down trackside where Clinton Jeffrey is standing by. Clinton? Well, Brandon Watson has checked all the boxes so far, guys. They're going to fill them up with fuel, four tires, and a quick adjustment. He's real happy so far. Service at this end of pit lane, a very small handling adjustment for the 17 car. He's a little tight in the center. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix, no real changes. And our new champion, the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron, they're going to loosen that car up just a little bit. Great part about the brake race, the stop allows the drivers to get a drink from their water bottle catch their breath that's what we'll do we'll take a quick break be back with more on tsa the pinty's fall brawl from delaware speedway is brought to you by delta bingo and gaming by sani forward and more and by ebay motors the right parts and the right vehicles at the right prices let's ride ready to go for the second half of the pinty's fall brawl brandon watson gonna start once again on the outside they are on fresh tires though dave this could be a game changer for some of these teams at 120 laps to figure out their car and decide where they needed changes and now what they have is what they have for the stretch run. DJ Kennington under attack from Kevin Lacroix. That represents right now our battle for the second place in the points championship. Oh, oh, oh contact in one and two. Kennington and Lacroix get together. Lacroix gets the short end of the stick though. Jake Sheridan gave him the chance to get back in line and get settled down, but not by much. He's right on board with Trayton Lapsovich in the 20. 74 pushed really far up in three and four once again. You know, I think in turn four, that might be by design. There's so much grip up there. Even when we saw the pass for the lead, Brandon Watson got around DJ. DJ went way up to the outside of the racetrack. Speaking of the outside, look at Sheridan make that outside groove start to work. He had a run on the eight of Raphael Lassard, but Lassard really slammed the door on the front straightaway. We've watched that all season long, but normally when we look out the windshield of the 96 this year, there's not a whole lot of traffic except for lap cars. Yeah, he struggled a little bit here today, did Mark Antoine Cameron. Three wide down the back straightaway as Donald Teach backs out wisely a little bit. Ranger got a good run down low. When Donald Teach backs out of a <laughs> hall, 
you know you have to back out of it because he is so aggressive he'll take any opportunity but i think that was probably a wise choice for the driver of the 80 machine does have one nascar pinty series career win looking to add another one here today at delaware speedway running a limited schedule here in 2022 battling with jake sheridan side by side Donald Teach with the traditional preferred line down on the bottom, and he gets a great run there off of turn number two, and he will clear Jake Sheridan. Sheridan drops down behind that number 80 machine. And an update on that three guys. We've got another car around, and again, it is the 66 of Wallace Stacy. We're staying green now, though. He's got a left rear tire down. Can he make it back to pit lane? Well, he certainly can make it back to pit lane. The question is, will he make it back to pit lane? He's going so slowly down the back straightaway, and now he stopped. So this will draw yet another full course caution here in the Pinty's Fall Brawl. They eventually did go yellow. As soon as the yellow comes out, miraculously, the car runs again. And that's a classic short track move to get the yellow, but NASCAR officials generally don't like that approach. You know who else doesn't like that? The driver of the number nine, Brandon Watson. He had clean air in front of him. Now he's going to have a car stacked up right beside him. Let's go down trackside. Clinton. Mark Dilley pulls the 64 car in. The crew will go under the hood on the last caution. They were pouring the cooler water over the rat to try and cool it down. They've got a replacement one here. We'll watch and see if they decide to replace it. Dilley drops the net. That doesn't look good. No, when the window net comes down, traditionally, Dave, that marks the end of your day. Yeah, tough break for the Leland IHL number 64 of Mark Dilley, a veteran of the NASCAR Pinty Series. And the Cascar Series before that as we get sent to go back to green. Pace car is down pit lane once again. Watson jumps back up to the outside. Familiar place for the driver of the Tricorp number nine. Very subtle games being played on the restart between turn three and four between Brandon Watson and DJ Kennington. A couple of veteran of these restarts as we briefly ran on board with Larry Jackson in the O'Neill Electric number 84. The outside restart's not a slam dunk anymore for Brandon Watson. He has to contend for the race lead as look at DJ Kennington forcing the issue down low. Quick ride on board, Matthew Kingsbury in the 12, and now Watson uses that momentum on the outside. These onboards give you an idea of how tight the confines are for these drivers, and I don't mean how tight they are in the cars. But how little room they have to operate as we're back under yellow. A few cars have gone around, and boy, oh boy, TJ Renamato's number two car has been redecorated from back to front. Yeah, the entire left front corner torn off that Valamo number two. But it's all the way back to the driver's yeah. door. The whole driver's door is ripped broken off of the, that Broken thing. the windshield. That's the second time here in 2022 that the windshield has been broken on that Chevy Camaro. Now, in fairness, the first time was out in Saskatoon and that car was not driving away. Let's have a look. We towards the back of the field. There goes Cathcart around. And it didn't look like a big hit. He got together with the 31 of Daniel Bois. And now he finds his pit stall. Wow, TJ Renamato brings the two car in. Heavy damage on the driver's side of this car and even cracked the windshield right out of it. You know, I mentioned in Saskatoon that car didn't drive He said, Adam, there is nothing left of that car. The engine couldn't be salvaged. The rear end, nothing on that car. We'll take another break. We'll be back with more from Delaware Speedway. Delaware Speedway opened in 1952. That is one of the oldest continually operating tracks in Canada today. It hosts the Pinty's Fall Brawl, the final race of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series season. And once again, back to green and a duel between DJ Kennington and Brandon Watson. And the group here under Luke Ramsey, Russ Earl, and all of them, they've, they've made it the destination that it once was. And I think they're going to take it to greater heights still. Contact between Kennington and Brandon Watson through turn number four. Oh, and they get together again. Still out there. Still out there. They keep digging, keep digging. Outside, Raphael. Inside. You're good. 
You can tell laps are winding down. We're into the final 100. The gloves start to come off here. Raphael Lassar, we rode on board quickly with the easy clean number eight. A quick bump from the 74 onto the back of the 17. Raphael Lassar working the inside of the racetrack. DJ Kenny. Oh, oh, my goodness. That's your leader. A big slide at three and four. Watson manages to hang on to it. What a save. It's the Tricorp number nine. I don't know how he saved that race car, but I also don't know how he kept the rest of the field from... Like, everybody had to check up enough for him to save that car. And he's still in the lead, battling with the eight of Raphael Lassard. We need to look at this again. Kudos to DJ Kennington for backing off and letting him catch that one back up. Let's go back down to the pits, Dave. Well, we got TJ running about. TJ, this is the second time this year your car got monster trucked. Are you okay? What happened out there? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, we just didn't think the car was safe enough to keep going. And, you know, got to worry about that safety today. Front windshield was broken in. I was coming into turn three, was in the high line, doing perfect in my line. I think the 56, one of the other cars got thrown up into me and sent me into the wall, and that was it. Nothing I could do to avoid it, so terrible. Tough break for TJ, but he's okay, guys. Thank you. Dave, did you really just give kudos to DJ Cannington <laughs> for letting Brandon Watson save the car we after he punted him? He was the one who caused it, so <laughs> definitely making things exciting. But DJ Cannington getting a feel of those punts as the Napa Auto Parts number 74 gets a little bumper happy on the back of the Castro Edge Dodge. It really is better to give than to receive. <laughs> sure. It's, oh, there's a receive from the 27 of Andrew Ranger. He already has some racer's tape on the nose of the GM Pie Chevrolet. Well, in the aid of Rafael Lazard, the left rear corner of that car is kind of squishy as well. So when the Ranger gets into the left rear corner with a soft right front. No pressure back by three. It, it looks bizarre up there because they both kind of cave in together. Kind of two plates of mashed potatoes racing together. <laughs> Donald Teej to the inside of Jake Sheridan. And Teej planning potentially more races in 2023. He's having a brand new road course car built to race with the NASCAR Pinty Series next year. So that could be exciting. And I don't think he will drive it. I believe Benoit would. He's trying to get his brother yeah. Benoit to come out and do some racing with him. Benoit has made a few starts in the NASCAR Pinty Series, so it'll be exciting to see him back in action. He does want to get some practice before jumping into the deep end, though. It's been more than five years. I want to say the last time they raced, he said, was 2017, the three hours of Daytona. Look at this up at the front, though. Brandon Watson out by himself. And then you have a pair of battles. You have Lassard and Ranger and Lacroix and Kennington. And then this is this deeper in the field. In this race, we have it. Whoa, my goodness. Oh, a big push from the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. You can see the bumper caved in on the 80, and the three of Jake Sheridan had to step out of line just to save it. You can see the hood of the Lapsovich car move up the windshield. He got into him so hard. Really, the story of this race is the saves that everybody's been able to make to stay green, such hard racing at the front of the field. We haven't gone more than five laps at any time without there being battles for position in the top five of this race, Dave. Like, it just hasn't calmed down. Look at the Napa Auto Parts, number 74 of Lacroix to the inside of Kennington. Once again, Ranger tucked right up underneath that back bumper of the EHR number eight. What are we even doing talking about Andrew Ranger? He's been so out of shape so many times today, and now here he is battling in the top three with Rafael Lassard. That really has been the story of the 27 team here in 2022. It's been either really good, they end up in victory lane, or not so good. That battle between Kevin Lacroix and DJ Kennington continues to rage down the backstretch. Wallace Stacy in the 66 tries to tuck down out of the way. Everybody gets around on the high side. We're under green in the Pinty Small Brawl. Welcome back to the 13th and final race of the NASCAR Pinty Series season. We're set to crown the champion in the 2022 year here at Delaware Speedway, but there's still lots of racing on the track. Nobody is giving an inch. 
David, they're definitely not, David. It's time to go for these drivers. Donald Tees, you can see the back bumper of the 80 machine all beat to heck. And what a season it has been as you see Brandon Watson in the Tricorp number nine out in front. A good group of supporters from Tricorp here cheering on that team. Brand new livery here today as well, new paint job. So it's a little bit different to spot that car when he's working through traffic. Should Brandon Watson hang on, and look at the damage on the 20th trade laps of it. Should Brandon Watson hang on and score his first win? Does he ever drive a white race car again? Oh, good question. Have another look at what happened to the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. And it was that incident earlier on. No, it's a different incident, actually, pushing the back end of the three of Jake Sheridan. Clear, clear low. And you can see the pieces and parts just flapping around on that number 20 machine. Not only that, the hood got pushed up as well. Look, it's almost into the sight line of Trayton Lapsovich, who isn't all that tall, we can say. Well, the concern becomes the hood pins. If you shear the hood pins off or knock the fiberglass from around them and the hood goes flying up in front of the driver and he can't see, there's a lot of potential issues. NASCAR will be looking at all of them. That black piece that we see flapping, that is not part of the hood. That's part of the nose of the car. And while we're talking about him, we should mention that Trayton Lapsovich off to school, focus on his studies, going to the Schulich School of Business so uh, a very smart race car driver and a very smart man off the racetrack as well. Yeah, he's always done well with his scholastics. Sherry makes sure of that. There you go. Kennington working through lap traffic. That's Trevor Monahan in the GSR number 28. Actually a car prepared out of the DJK stables. They work to the outside of that 28, and now Lapsovich going to work to the outside of the Jake Sheridan number three. He's tried the through approach. Now he'll try the around approach. Seems to work a little bit better, but while I have the opportunity, he should give a tip of the hat to the NASCAR on TSN crew who's traveled across the country bringing these shows to you. We have to thank Joel and Steve. Also, our camera people, Claude, Rob, Dean, Stan, Frank, Colin, and Bryce. Colin, who does the audio, and Bryce, our stats man extraordinaire, help us out each and every week on these shows. Really, we couldn't do it without them. Well, you know, we can't make ourselves look or sound very good. And Dave, it takes a, a village, Dave. Dave Oliver as well should uh, throw in Dave Oliver, a big key component in making this show happen. It is a fantastic team. And it's a grind. It is. I mean, it's, it's a 13-race schedule, but it's fairly compact thanks to being in Canada. We have to wait for the snow to melt and wait for all the warm weather to stick around in order to get a season in. Mark Antoine Cameron keeping the pressure on the 20th Trayton Lapsovich. A little further ahead, we see DJ Kennington in the 17. He's running fifth with Andrew Ranger right behind him in the 27, the three of Jake Sheridan, and then that battle with Lapsovich and Cameron contact at a turn four. I haven't talked too much about your champion in waiting, the GM Pie number 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron makes it stick on the inside. Two cars with a little bit of body damage, but still working pretty well. It just won't affect the speed of these race cars. There is almost virtually no aero yeah. with these race cars. So the body damage just, just takes some of the pretty off them. That's kind of what's cool about this series, too, is you don't have to rely on aerodynamics to make a pass. It's just old school, short track, stock car racing. And, and I brag about it all, all the time, Dave. I love the racing up here. Well, look at things as Jake Sheridan goes to the inside of Andrew Ranger. On the bottom. Look at the people who come to visit this series and aren't able to win. Alex LeBay, who, who was dominant in the series, won a championship. He's having a decent day, but he doesn't come out to dominate at the front. You know what's interesting, too, is today is Sherry Putnam's last day as competition director for NASCAR in Canada. The first champion she crowned, Alex LeBay. So it's cool to see him back in the field here today. She had the longest run of any series director yet. She's done a very good job at building this series to where it is. The Sheridan, it's all kinds of crossways off of turn number four, trying to stick it down low on the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Gets a good run off of turn number two. They'll drag race down the backstretch. 
little bit of contact maybe going into turn three. You don't make Andrew Ranger uncomfortable when he's on the outside, though. He is right at home on the high side of an oval. He's a regular captain highlighter. Normally, on an oval track, he'll find that high groove, the first one to work it in. This time, Sheridan's going to complete that pass and stick it in. As I say that, Ranger says, hang on, I'm going to drive it in just a little bit harder up top. Now he'll be side by side with his teammate, Mark Antoine Cameron of the 96. You know, we call them teammates and they are owned by the same person, but these cars are prepared very separately in different provinces by different crews. We should mention too, the conditions continue to change. The sun or what we saw of the sun earlier on today is starting to set. The temperature is starting to fall. So that'll change the racing surface just a little bit. How about Kyle Steckley in that 22? You know, we talk about all the carnage and all the aggression of the day. And here he is out there trying to battle his way into the top 10, but barely a mark on that race car. Yeah, he's had a pretty good season running here at Delaware Speedway behind the wheel of a late model. Of course, his dad, Canadian Motorsport Hall of Famer, Scott Steckley. Been a good coach in his corner in the NASCAR Pinty Series as well. Brandon Watson is into some heavy lap traffic. A bunch of drivers who don't want to go down a lap. Dexter Stacy, Matthew Kingsbury in the 12, J.P. Bergeron in the 1. They better start working. We'll take a quick break and be back with more from Delaware Speedway. There is a look at your leader, Brandon Watson from Stinger, Ontario. And what you'll notice behind that car, not much in the way of company. He has been so dominant here today. Dave, I can't help but feel like this is the calm before the storm. I mean, when you write the script for all of our races, spoiler alert, there is no script. <laughs> they just all seem to go like this on the ovals. They string out at some point, but they always come back. This race has had action from start until this very point. Normally, there's a midsection of the race where things calm down. We have not yet seen the calm here, but I think that's kind of what we're seeing right now. And there you can see Alex Tagliani trying to move underneath the lap car. Deco North America on board the 84 of Larry Jackson for today's race, along with O'Neill Electric as we ride on board. Larry Jackson, a firefighter from Oakville and a team owner. We look back to Mark Antoine Cameron in a battle with the three of Jake Sheridan. I can't believe how clean these cars looked at the halfway break and how messed up a lot of them are goes to three of Sheridan, a bump from the 96 of Cameron in one and two, sends Sheridan for a spin in turn number two. I, I don't understand why that just happened. Just the two of them racing and it's inconsequential to Mark Antoine Cameron, the position they're racing for, but there was just something about EHR cars and Mark Antoine Cameron here at Delaware. Yeah, they tangled one year ago. This time, for just inside, that was for the fifth position. Sheridan had it. Cameron obviously wanted it just a little bit more. Yeah, pretty swift contact there. You remember last year with Shea Gemmel driving it, for Ed Hackens and racing that he got into it with. It really didn't look vicious, though, from the 96. He didn't jump on the gas very hard. It just rolled a little bit better through the middle part of the corner. Yeah, that's part of the story, Dave. I mean, the other part is you, you've got to stay off the back bumper of the car. You can make contact, but once you cross that line to contact, there was no chance for Jake Sheridan to not spin out there. No, it's making contact in the wrong spot, too, that affects the car in front of and you. We are getting reports that the EHR crew are furious down there in the pits. Last year when these things happened, there was a visit from one pit crew to another pit crew. Yeah, so we'll see what happens as we get set to go back to green once again. Look at that jump from the nine of Watson. A great launch. As long as you keep a, a steady pace through three and four, the leader chooses when he wants to fire. And Watson has just been firing very well. But Rafael Lassard has a look. Oh, oh no. Lassard gets turned on the front straightaway. Cars gang up and on top of each other. Goes the 27 Ranger over the 18 of Tagliani. We have got a parking lot on the front straightaway. 
and a couple of race cars absolutely torn up. Andrew Ranger gonna drive away, but that car is not in good shape. Have another look at what happened. Lassard was trying for the lead. He got a bump from behind. Ooh. And then everything broke loose back there. Look at DJ Kevington. He came to a stop almost underneath a couple cars. So we watch it go on. Kyle Steckley, JP Bergeron do an amazing job on the inside. And like you say, DJ Kennington just basically stopped and waited for all the cars to land. Ranger took that wild ride, is out sitting on the ledge of his car. Have another look from onboard Lacroix. So there was definite contact. It looked like Lassard was having to check up a little bit, and Lacroix did not get checked up. Look at where he puts his hands. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> And that worked out well for Lazard because the car came to a stop when he spun out. Everybody was trying to avoid now the this. Now this will be a look. Oh, he gets contact, but he gets stopped and then grabs a gear and gets going. DJ Kennington. He must have a horseshoe Un in that car. Unbelievable. This is the look from Matthew Kingsbury. He got lucky too. He got a piece of it, so very well could have damage. Safety crews are talking to Alex Tagliani, Andrew Ranger. He's just had enough. He's taking it back pit side. We'll be back with more. He was in that battle for second place in points coming into this race, and that is what's left of the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Taunts with him. Taunt. Happy to see Alex Tagliani, who's been checked out at the infield care center. He is okay. What did you see from your seat? Yeah, I mean, he got aggressive um, from from where I was. I think uh, the eight got sideways a bit, and um, people try to go on the outside. Uh, I was on the outside of the 96, and uh, I got pushed in the wall, and uh, there was nowhere to go, and pretty big wreck. Glad you're okay. Thanks. A tale of two seasons, Dave. Last year, Alex Tagliani came to Delaware Speedway with a real opportunity to win the championship, and they just didn't perform. Things didn't go their way, but they didn't have the speed. Today, they had some speed, but Lady Luck basically just tossed Alex Tagliani to the side. Safe to say Alex Tagliani's not gonna be a fan of Delaware Speedway moving forward as we get sent to go back to green with 11 laps to go. And look at Teach trying to get out in front of Brandon Watson. He says, I control the start and then shoots down to the inside. That's one of the tricks Brandon Watson uses. He lets the car beside him get so far out ahead that they have to wait for him. And then he launches to the start. The defense to that is what Teach did. Put your driver's door right into the right front tire of the car beside you. Ooh, it didn't work. A couple oh. cars together and Kyle Steckley into the front stretch wall in the ABC number 22. Oh, bummer for Kyle Steckley. I don't Kyle know if Steckley. they got into the speedy dry off of turn number four. Hopefully he'll be able to drive away without much damage, but. And front stretch. End of the 36, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, something, something, something broken in the back. Something is broke. You watch them come off the corner. Cameron got really loose, then down into Stackney. And it looks like at that point, something did break as a 22. As a, something actually, it was the 96's radio of Mark Antoine Cameron claiming that something broke on his car. Well, it definitely broke loose. Five laps to go for this restart. We are getting down to it here at Delaware Speedway. Another great launch for Brandon Watson. Look at that 74 card, how clean it is. Kevin Lacroix has been in the mix, but he's been able to keep his nose clean relatively in the Napa Auto Parts number 74. DJ Kennington is right there in the battle. He's to the inside of Trey Milapsevich. Look at the crew of Brandon Watson looking on nervously excitingly 
hoping to make it to the checkered flag. There'll be two laps to go as they cross the start finish line this time. I don't know who Brandon Watson should be cheering for right now. Behind him are the two most aggressive oval track racers this series has ever known. But as they start to battle side by side and start beating on each other just a little bit, that's going to allow the nine to get free. Now they're single file and look at Teach set sail. Big run down the back stretch. Teach closes in on the nine to Brandon Watson. The white flag will come out this time. Watson a little bit of a slide on the exit of turn number four. That allows the 80 to close up. He's to the inside. Teach looking for the lead. Side by side of a turn number two. Watson gets the power down. He'll pull away on the back stretch, but Teach is close enough. One more shot in turn three and four. He backs up, does not get to the back bumper of the nine. Brandon Watson will win his first in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Donald Teach second, Lacroix comes home third with Lapsovich fourth, Kennington fifth. They will be all the deadlocked for second place in points. What a run for Brandon Watson. But Donald Teach, oh, yeah. he raced him clean when he didn't necessarily have to. Fireworks after the fact, the 96 of Cameron stopped, the three ran into him as a number nine of Brandon Watson celebrates with some donuts here in Delaware. Let's look at the results, Teach, with that second place finish. Alex LeBay, after not a great night, finishes six with Berger on seventh, Dexter Stacy with a top 10. There you can see 11th through 20th. Brian Cathcart, 13th, Larry Jackson in 12th, and Kyle Steckley back in 16th after a solid run. Let's head down to victory lane. Well, Brandon Watson will pick up his first NASCAR Pinties Series race. Brandon, what a great job tonight. You're a NASCAR winner now. You've won all over the province, but you get it done here tonight. What does it mean to you to finally grab a win here in the NASCAR Pinty Series and the Fall Brawl? That's definitely, uh, definitely big for us. It's a hard-fought year for us. Uh, up and down our first year in this, uh, this series. NASCAR does a great job in these series. Appreciate them for everything they do for us. Uh, but, you know, these White more sports guys, they, uh, they worked hard all year. Uh, definitely happy to get them uh, a win here in their home track. So we're definitely happy with all our sponsors, too. Can, couldn't have done it without them all year. Sheer Metal Products, Tricorp. Uh, Tricorp has a booth here this weekend. So special thanks to them, GMS, all my crew. Uh, my wife's here, Kate, and uh, just super pumped to get uh, finally get a win here. Well, Brandon, you're also, he'll get a word with Don Tease. Brandon, you're also the Justin's Rookie of the Year. Let's go pull that yellow stripe off because you're not a rookie anymore. You're officially a winner here in the NASCAR Pinties Series. How about it for your Justin's Rookie of the Year and your feature winner tonight, Brandon Watson. He is so cool. Though. Like, Brandon just swaggers around. <laughs> from his start as a 13-year-old at Barry Speedway to now a winner in the NASCAR Pinty Series. But have a look at the final point standings. We knew Cameron would be the champion as Kevin Lacroix coming home second by two points over Kennington and Lapsovich leapfrogged over Tagliani. Let's go back to the front straightaway for more. It was last fall that Mark Antoine Cameron, Robin McCluskey, and J.C. Pae all came together, pooled their resources, and started building race cars. They worked hard over the winter, countless hours, seven days a week in their shop, and now they are NASCAR Pinty's Series champions. They very nearly won their first race of the year at Sunset Speedway, finally broke through in Newfoundland. Mark Antoine Cameron, you were a champion in the NASCAR Pinty Series. What an unbelievable accomplishment for this first-year team. Definitely. I mean, uh, when we started that uh, last year, last winter, we put that together with my old buddy Robin and suit all those guys I was uh, working with at uh, Brandon, Brandon White Motorsport. And that championship is all deserved for him. We work, we work really hard, and that was kind of motivation for us during the off season, doing that for uh, the memory of Brandon White. And then after that, I mean, we knew that was like. Uh, we were quick without expecting like that like really quick quick so we pulled a few wins during the season we are really you know strong all season long i'm so proud of that team they work like crazy hard and we can do it without my sponsor gm paye and chevrolet canada also ideal cargo was there on board wow what amazing season i just can't believe it now it's like uh I have to drink some champagne tonight. I'm not used to that, but I will tonight for sure. Three wins, 11 top tens, and now a championship. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mark Antoine Cameron, 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series champion.
And you can hear the emotion in his voice. It's been smiles all season for the 2022 champion. Cameron has been so strong wherever we've gone. Wait, the whole series, Dave, you can't even explain the trajectory of this series. It's like we just kept winding up during the pandemic, and once they let it loose, it traveled at ludicrous speed across the country. I like. You can't put into words. Every team was so excited for every place we visited this year. None more than that man and that team, Mark Antoine Cameron. It is going to be a huge celebration tonight as Cameron hoists the trophy high. We can't forget Fanny, a huge part of that race team. I mean, she gets down and dirty on that race car like everybody else does. Today's race has been brought to you by Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. By Sunbelt Rentals for your small and large construction needs. And by Castrol Edge, the number one synthetic brand in Canada. What a ride it's been, Dave. I mean, this is 15 years. This is the most fun I've had in a season of NASCAR Pinty Series racing. You and me both for Adam, Clinton, Todd, Kendra, and everybody involved with the NASCAR on TSN crew. I'm Dave Bradley. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you next year. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.